Pat, let's yeah. move to you and talk a bit about health care and caregiving. Okay. So approximately one half of all Americans have chronic conditions, and, and one in four have multiple chronic conditions. And where we see this having the most impact and the most call for intervention is, um, as you might expect, among the elderly. Uh, and when you look at these conditions, even such things as mild That's cognitive right. impairment or uh, mild issues with mobility, metabolic issues that may lead to diabetes, et cetera, do contribute to the issues that we've talked about already, frailty and balance issues, and eventually lead to falls and other complications, which then set a whole series of events, um, mostly negative, in, in, uh, into effect. Um, now, when we look at um, older adults and the care of older adults, increasingly as we move forward, we're looking at a health system that needs to address things such as self-management. People are living longer, but they're caring much, participating much more in their own care. And also areas of prevention, particularly in the areas of secondary and tertiary prevention too, uh, because we do have people with chronic uh, conditions and overlay that process of aging in combination. So those are very important aspects looking forward. Also, when we look at the older population, increasingly the care for those individuals is beginning to fall on family members and friends and the community itself. Um, it turns out even just last year that approximately 14% of the nation's adult population provided unpaid care to an adult over the age of 50. The health of informal caregivers is very important, but the responsibilities for caring for family members and friends can have a significant <clears throat> negative impact on their health and their quality of life. And in turn, decreased caregiver health has a negative impact on the person being cared for. Uh, and, and one really good example of that that is familiar to many of you um, is that a decline in caregiver health associated with dementia caregiving uh, is often what is most singularly responsible for the early placement of that care recipient in long-term institutional care. Informal caregivers are vulnerable to high levels of stress from feelings of inadequate knowledge or actually inadequate knowledge about the disease or condition, limited resources for providing that care that is required, and lack of skills training or confidence related to managing patients' conditions. More research could improve the coordination of that care and also caregiver education about what is needed, what is necessary in preparation for those responsibilities. There's a widespread agreement that older Americans really prefer to remain in their homes rather than go to nursing facilities, um, and that's at all stages of their um, later years. In the majority of cases, studies have shown that health and quality of life are often better when adults can age in place. So we have a number of studies that um, are, have either been completed or are underway to try to facilitate this. And some of the examples include the use of motion sensors to monitor sleep and movement in an older population in a person's living space. That can detect changes in activity and patterns that may be harbingers of functional decline, but also um, aberrant activities such as wandering or falling uh, during that um, in their life space. Um, also, forming health teams. Innovative health teams are now being tested out in models of care delivery that help frail elderly people remain at home by altering their, their environment or their daily functioning. Um, there are a number of uh, electronic and um, telehealth approaches that are now beginning to be used um, to support lifestyle modifications leading to increased physical activity and even improving that activity and, and uh, health status in underserved populations and rural po and hard to reach populations. There are also interventions for informal caregivers themselves that are successful. One of these you've heard about earlier, and that's the REACH study, um, Resources for Enhancing Alzheimer's Care, Caregiver Health. And that's an intervention which was designed to reach caregivers from diverse groups, teaching them about Alzheimer's disease, managing stress, maintaining their own health. And that particular study has now been implemented widely across the country, including the VA system, and is now going global. We also are sponsoring um, uh, something called an information portal, which is for family caregivers. And that is an attempt to gather all the information related to patients from electronic health record and other uh, official records into one place so that the caregiver has access to those and doesn't have to go running all over. 
A number of caregiver interventions have also been designed for telephone or face-to-face -face delivery in either clinical or home settings, and those have been very successful, but many of them are being tested for delivery on the internet. And that opens up other possibilities, such as the use of Skype and WebEx. However, sustainability of these kinds of approaches do require rapid adaptation to the pace of change in technologies, which in itself is pretty astounding. So, so in, in my closing remarks, I would like to say that healthcare technology and healthcare itself is advancing at really a breathtaking pace. The future will place a greater emphasis on research that aims to use new tools such as telehealth and internet-based communication for patients and healthcare professionals, also for caregivers, informal caregivers. And those are going to be including tablet and smartphone applications, wearable activity monitors, um, as innovative ways to provide better care. Um, these will include designing technologies for self-management uh, with multiple data inputs and also other applications using mHealth. But it will be really important to remember that in doing all of this, we do need to stress the communication with all of the groups that we're dealing with and to be able to uh, communicate health mes messages in very clear, plain language approaches, also in ways that will reach all of our population uh, and so that the uh, care can be improved for everyone, not just certain segments of the population. So with that, I will finish and look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Pat. Pat, is there, uh, uh, I had heard at one of the forum meetings here on disability and aging that Victor mentioned, um, there was a presentation uh, by an individual who said that, you know, the technologies are there. There are a tremendous array of, of assistive technologies of various sorts for older persons, but it's very difficult to get these commercialized, that the capital isn't around, and that uh, it's been, they're sitting on the shelf. Is it, what's your sense? So I think that's changing, Jack. I think some of the early ones were fairly expensive and um, not as user-friendly. And as is one of the, the upbeat things about technology, one of the optimistic things is that typically it does get less expensive with time and more people use it. And it also, in order for it to be commercially um, uh, accessible or commercially successful, really it does have to be more user friendly. And so we're seeing some of the newer versions that are coming out with the M Health initiatives, that these are user friendly, they are less expensive, and they are accessible. Um, some of them are even just publicly accessible through a variety of organizations organizations that make them available to, to people with limited resources. Good. Encouraging. It is. James. 